Hillary Clinton was recently on The View making the case for Joe Biden. Let's hear what she had to say. Biden, when five, four out of five battleground polls have him losing to Trump, the best person to take him on. Yes, he is. And he's done a really good job as president. And, yeah. you know, I, I like to evaluate people in public life on what have they gotten done for us. Yeah. And, you know, you look at his record, despite all of the odds, he's really produced positive results. But more than that, we are a year out. And if you go back and look at comparable presidencies, Barack Obama was behind at mm -hmm. this point yeah. in his reelection. Yeah. My husband was behind at this point in his reelection. You know, until the candidates, the nominees are actually chosen, people are always saying, well, maybe there's somebody better out there. Let me look over here. You know, oh, I see somebody I like, or I just saw, you know, him give a speech or her position. That's natural. Mm -hmm. But what I think is important is that, as you say, Alyssa, that Joe Biden uh, is not only uh, proved that he's done a good job, but look at the alternative Ugh. and and look at what we would face as a country. And I think the election results yesterday should be very good news for President Biden. Yes. And I certainly see it that way. I hope yeah. so. Hillary Clinton also had some choice words for who else? Donald Trump. Let's listen. People would get legitimately elected. Mm -hmm. And then they would try to do away with elections and do away with opposition and do away with a free press. And you could see it in countries where, well, Hitler was duly elected, That's right? right? Yeah. And so all of a sudden, somebody with those tendencies, those dictatorial, authoritarian tendencies would be like, oh, okay, we're going to shut this down. We're going to throw these people in jail. And, and they didn't usually telegraph that. Trump is telling us yeah. what he intends yes. to right. do. Okay, so if it's possible to put the uh, Hiller comparisons out of mind for just a second and go back to the first clip. You know who else wanted not to make comparisons? Hitler? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay, look, so what I'm struck by is how similar her response uh, to Alyssa's question about is, is Biden the best person for the job, given that in all of these polls, he, it's showing that he's going to lose to Trump. Here's what I think are reasonable arguments. It's a year out, making comparisons to what, what other candidates have been in those positions. But what she leads with is, well, of course he deserves to be the guy because he did a good job. I know that's where your, um, your sensors were going well, off. Even if I were to concede that he did a good job, that's not responsive to the question. Right. The public obviously they don't disagrees agree. with you. They don't agree. And this was very reminiscent to me of what Hillary Clinton's response was to all the criticism she was getting in 2016. It's giving, it's her turn. I stood in the line. I waited my turn. I jumped through the hoops. I did what I was supposed to do. I checked the boxes. I did a good job. And so now I deserve to be president, even though she was a historically unfavorable candidate who polls showed repeatedly throughout that election season was within the margin of error of losing to another historically unpopular president uh, or candidate in Donald Trump. Yeah. Um, it, it doesn't answer the question why his poll numbers are so bad. And by the way, you know, she can say that, yeah, Obama was was trailing a little bit at one point. This is worse than than previous equivalent polling. This is real bad for Biden specifically, because this isn't a national poll. We're looking specifically at the yeah. states where he needs to win. I think she was referring to like his, uh, to Obama's, I don't remember the, the Clinton case, but for Obama specifically, the overall, there was a point at which his overall, you know, approval ratings had dipped and it was looking not, you know, there were discouraging signs. This is Biden specifically behind, massively behind in fi the five states he needs to win. So it is more dire than she was letting on there. And then as you point out, she has absolutely no explanation for that, why that would be the case. And she just goes into the mat to defend it, which she can do. But obviously people are, are not internalizing that. Or then you start to get yourself in the like, well, he's good, but the people the people are failing him. Mm -hmm. His only problem is one of messaging. He's done so much good, but he hasn't explained it well enough, which is something that, you know, White House press secretaries often take mm -hmm. that. Like, well, we need to do a better job explaining to people how great we are. Yeah. Well, the people don't agree. All right. Clip number two, Hillary Clinton is making an argument that Trump has telegraphed his willingness to um, 
shirk uh, democ democratic controls, mm -hmm. uh, and that that makes him a uniquely dangerous threat to our democracy, much like Hitler, who was duly elected, but uh, obviously did not just yeah. promote democracy I once in office. I just don't, I don't, I especially don't want to hear this criticism, I'm sorry, from Hillary Clinton, who, you know, Trump's handling of his uh, his reelection was odious and wrong, and he did a lot of, he did and said a lot of things that were very bad. He was, in my view, rightly impeached for it. They're now attempting to um, charge him with legal ramifications for it. It was very bad. It was embarrassing. Um, the spectacle of January 6th was humiliating. It's not been good for the Republican Party. It's just all bad. There's nothing good to say about it. Nothing good has come of it, um, in addition to just being bad. But Hillary Clinton, she did not go to any of the same lengths, so I will, you know, don't come at me with that criticism, but she is someone who fundamentally believed her loss was illegitimate um, based on utter BS about Russia and all that. So I just, I, I think it's a bit rich for her to go to that reservoir. Yeah, I, I'm thinking kind of broadly taking a step back about her tone and approach in these kinds of interviews. And I find her to be utterly unpersuasive. And that could just be a me issue. But I do wonder what it would be like and what her kind of public perception would be if she ever just took a different kind of approach and said, look, I know it's incredibly frustrating to be a member of the American public right now. So much seems to be going wrong. We just have not kept up with inflation. The dollar is not stretching as far as it used to. And I will say Joe Biden has made some gains in this, yeah. this realm, but obviously not as much as you need. And so I think it's incumbent for you to keep agitating, keep trying to push him, but know that the best person and the person in the White House who's more likely to listen to those concerns and be trying to rectify the situation is Joe Biden, not Donald Trump. Think, but she won't even yeah, say that. Yeah, I think she's incapable of recognizing that. I, she thinks that, uh, again, she thinks... Biden is great, and, and you don't know about it because you're stupid. It's the media's fault, and it's <laughs> Russia's fault. Right? You're stupid, and also you're being confused yeah. by these foreign actors who are planting these nefarious ideas in your mind and then puppeteering you. And that's the pr real problem. That's her focus. I mean, she's never taken responsibility for her own loss, mm -hmm. which was solely due to she could have won. She ought to have won. Mm -hmm. She could have just made different. She could have campaigned more in the states it came down to. She thinks she she thinks she lost because because of Russia, and yeah. her, her people think she lost because of Russia. I mean, it also does not answer the question of why not have a primary. Yeah. Okay, but Trump Trump is bad. Yeah. Blah blah blah. We get it, but we're now in a situation where twenty four percent of voters say they're willing to vote for RFK Jr. It, as an independent candidate that the Democratic Party can't shut down, can't keep out in the same traditional ways that it can keep out a, a, a Democratic Party candidate. Precisely because, in part, there was no opportunity for a primary. RFK Jr. was participating in the Democratic primary until it became clear that there was not going to be a Democratic primary. And so, you know, they are completely unresponsive to the, their own failures to respect democracy. They will talk about Trump, rightly so, and his efforts to overturn the election results in 2020, but not at all consider why it is that so many Americans, including Hillary Clinton, as it turns out, are interested in kind of extra electoral ways to exert their will in the public. I do think there's a kind of helplessness, not to de defend the 1-6 you know, protests or anything, but I think there's a more generalized sense of disconnect between Americans and our political system that leads people to want to look elsewhere, whether it is a lot of people on the left who are looking to third party candidates, Green Party candidates and the like, and hoping for a political revolution, whether it's people who are looking for more author authoritarian solutions. Everyone's basically given up on government. And people like Hillary Clinton are responsible for that being the case. So you can't condemn these kind of rebellious impulses from the public without taking some interest, looking inwardly at why people think they're more likely to get a Green New Deal by tying themselves to a pipe or stopping funding to Israel by blocking boats with armaments on them as these protesters have managed to do off the coast of California. Why that seems like a more successful way to exercise the public will than going to a, a, a ballot box. Mm. 
Well, that concludes our show for the day. Tomorrow, we'll be back with more Rising. Brianna and I, same time, same place, to discuss all of the news of the day, react to the GOP debate that is happening tonight. We will be up watching that, I'm sure. <laughs> I am sure. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe so you never miss any content. And for those of you who prefer to listen while you're on the move, we are now available anywhere you listen to podcasts. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.